welcome. I'm Melissa Caspern. Coming up on tonight's show, we have Mark Frank to update us on the Park and Rec Center, and Deb Moore to fill us in on what's new with the Holliston and Bloom Committee. And I'm Paul Solnier. Uh, we also have segments for about the Food Truck Festival, an interview with John Tracy at Jasper Hill, and we have a new Who Are You? But first, the news. The Holliston High School band and chorus recently went to Orlando, Florida to perform in Disney World over April vacation. They performed in the newly renovated Disney Springs, formerly known as Downtown Disney, and each group also enjoyed a workshop with Disney music professionals to learn about the process of being a real musician in a recording session. While they were there, they were able to enjoy time in all four major parks and also Universal Studios. There were 80 students and 15 chaperones on the trip. The trip took all year long to plan, and everyone had a wonderful time. We bring you another Who Are You segment. Mary Greendale had a chance to chat with Town Administrator Jeff Ritter. Hi, I'm Mary Greendale, and today I'm doing a segment with Jeff Ritter, who's the Town Administrator. And Jeff and I are going to do Who Are You in Real Life? So you're the town administrator. You've been here since last year? Um, it'll be two years in July. Really? Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Time does go by quickly. Yes, it does. Okay. And um, I was the um, uh, town administrator in um, most recently in Rehoboth. And then uh, before that, uh, I was in Wayland for mm -hmm. 11 years. And um, before that, I was in, uh, in Blackstone for at least four years. Yeah. And uh, so it's, um, you know, it's been a fabulous ride, really. Yeah. My mother always said to me that, uh, you know, those are, are really blessed who um, look forward to going to work mm -hmm. and enjoy their job yep. instead of having to go to work. Yep. And I can tell you without exception, um, uh, every single day is a day that I look forward to going to work. I'm out of bed, I'm ready to go, and uh, as challenging as the job can be, um, uh, there is never a day that I am, have any, any misgivings about coming to work. I really enjoy my work. <laughs> so what did you plan to do when you graduated from college? Well, when I got out of college, um, it, we were in the height of a recession. Oh, good. And I was living in Washington at the time. And State or D.C.? Washington, D.C. And uh, I graduated from American University. And uh, I um, literally went from one end of Connecticut Avenue to the other end of Connecticut Avenue handing out resumes. And um, I finally hit uh, a place, and uh, uh, it was called uh, Washington Researchers, and uh, they specialized in getting information out of the federal government and selling it to other people. Mm. And uh, so it was, you know, it was a, a, a very interesting time. It was a tough time because, uh, again, the recession was at, at its height, and uh, it was just um, very rewarding to have that, um, you know, opportunity. Originally, when I got out of college, I thought I was going to teach because okay. I have a degree in history and in public administration. And um, I thought that um, I was going to be teaching probably history classes um, in the greater Washington area. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what do you do in your spare time? Um, in my spare time, I do an awful lot of reading. Uh, I also, um, little be known to you is that um, I'm an amateur radio operator. Oh, really? So I, um, uh, I am a ham radio operator. Uh. And um, I um, spend a lot of time, uh, you know, um, working around the house, doing odd jobs, the honey, honey, honey do, do list. list. Yes, the yeah. honey do list. Yeah. And um, I also um, like to uh, dabble in, um, in the arts and in, uh, in uh, astronomy and um, just cultivating some, um, you know, flowers in our flower bed, although I will yield to my wife to that. Yeah. I just do what I'm told to do, <laughs> you know, you plant it here, plant it there. Um, so actually, I may have a couple of plants for you to work on for okay. me. <laughs> so where did you grow up? I grew up in Avon, Connecticut, and okay. uh, which That's is nice area down around uh, the southern part of Connecticut. Right? No, it's in it's just west of Hartford. Just west of Hartford. Yep. Okay, yep. Not near Sims, the right place at Simsbury, all. Farmington. Oh, all right, That's beautiful country. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Very, very similar community to uh, Holliston. Yeah. And um, I spent um, uh, my college years uh, working for the town uh, during the summers, and uh, I would work one uh, summer for the highway department, another summer for the parks department, another summer yeah. for the police department. Good preparation for you. So yeah. yeah 
yes, that's that was the seed. That yeah, interesting. Huh? Yep. So, if you could meet one famous person, living or dead, who would it be? That's an interesting question. Um, I think that uh, Leonardo da Vinci would be the one that I would like to meet uh, because he was obviously a Renaissance man mm -hmm. and uh, his uh, interests uh, were so diverse and so broad, you yeah. know, being yeah. at uh, painting or culture, ar architecture, uh, astronomy. Um, he was just a, a real Renaissance man and that's something that I kind of would like to be as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, what kind of music do you like to listen to? Um, my favorite uh, musician, I guess, of all time is John Lennon, mm. and uh, uh, so I like to listen, obviously, to uh, to, to old Beatles music. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm dating myself here a little That's bit, all right. but uh, uh, I, I, I think that John Lennon was a, a genius, yeah. and the way he composed music was just phenomenal. I, I can't comprehend it exactly how he was able to do that, but um, I'm struggling to figure it out. Um, but my interest. Are, are very broad. I mean, um, classical music, um, blues music. Um, Bruce Springsteen is a great, you know, a, a great uh, musician. I love to listen to his music. Um, I also um, like to listen to um, 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 country music a little bit. Yeah. So just a whole broad area of uh, music. I'm not really centered on one type of music, um, although I was in my youth. It was all rock and roll. Sure. Um, but I, I find as I get older, I really appreciate the musicians that um, you know come forward and uh, the compositions that they prepare. It's really outstanding. So, what is your favorite form of social entertainment? Do you like to go to the theater? Do you like to go to the movies? Do you like big dinner parties, small dinner parties? Um, I think I like uh, probably small dinner parties is probably my preference. Um, I also like to spend time at the uh, the symphony in Milford, the Kathleen Hill. Kathleen Yep. Yeah, and I'm, I'm struggling with a way to get them introduced into, into Holliston uh, because, um, you know, we have a venue in the upstairs in the town hall that would be probably um, ideal, not for their entire orchestra, mm -hmm. but maybe for a small part of their orchestra. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I do spend a lot of time um, um, thinking about uh, Kathleen Hill. I also am on, I'm president of the Framingham State University um, Alumni Board. Oh, okay. So uh, I do spend a fair amount of time at Framingham State and doing those things. So. Good. Um, all right. So, what chore or activity, whether it's work or home or otherwise, do you hate to do the most? <laughs> <laughs> I love everything about my job. Oh, I'm sure. Everything. Who wouldn't? Even who even wouldn't? even the residents. I call them sort of high maintenance <laughs> customers. Yeah. Um, who are complaining about their streetlights? So, so you can talk about something at home that you hate doing. What do you hate to have to do? I Shovel? hate shopping. Shopping. I hate shopping. Food shopping. Clothes shopping. Any shopping. Any shopping. I, I really do not like to do that. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, I. I married an Italian wife, and uh, she is an expert shopper. And uh, when she sends me to the store, I am inevitably on my phone to her and saying something like, "Is this something that you want, or is this what?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. What did you uh, mean? <laughs> yeah. What What did you mean by the, your your writing here on this list? And um, unfortunately, many times I bring home the wrong item, mm -hmm. and she has to go back and return it. She but, goes back. Oh, yeah, you're lucky she, she didn't send you back. And I don't like shopping for clothes, believe yeah. it or not. I mean, I'll go to Target or Kohl's, mm. and I'll spend like five minutes there, and I'll yeah. take something but off I the shelf. I have to know exactly where I'm going in there, otherwise I, I hyperventilate. Great. <laughs> so if you won the lottery, how would it change your life? Um, I don't think it would change my life that much, actually. Um, I would like to give more to charity. Uh, if I were to win, win the lottery, I don't, I don't play the lottery, so there aren't yeah, much I'm chance of me winning it. <laughs> yeah. But um, there are a lot of charities in, in Holliston. There are a lot of people in Holliston who, um, believe it or not, are struggling. I know. And uh, we forget about that. And we, um, we're so wrapped up in our own individual lives that we don't recognize that there are people who are struggling. Uh, but I would um, definitely um, allocate some of those winnings, those proceeds, um, to charity, and there's so many great causes that are going on in town that need assistance and need help. And um, you know, I would just encourage um, you know those who are maybe viewing this that uh, they 
take a step back and think about that yeah. and uh, try to allocate some of their resources to those who are in need. Mm -hmm. And we do have them here? We do. If you could, could, could go back and live in any period in history, what would it be? I think I would... I think I would like to go back to around um, uh, the turn of the century, the 1900s, um, because I have a great fascination with uh, my immigrant past, and um, I am very, very um, interested in the struggles that they went through, mm. uh, the discrimination that they experienced, and um, the struggles that they had in in making their way um, from um, from Ireland, which is I'm you know as I mentioned to you before is that uh, um, many of my relatives and relations and my family history date back to around um, the um, 1900s, the early 1900s. And um, I'm just extremely curious as to what, you know, they had to experience to make it in the United States. And um, it, it, it was a great blessing that they were able to make it to the United States and put down roots, and obviously I'm, I'm a byproduct of that. Public service has always been part of my family, and um, it's always been something that we've, we've uh, felt that uh, it's, it's, it's something that we need to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. and Public service isn't really respected very much anymore, which is an interesting thing. It is, yeah. Uh, who was the most influential person in your life? Well, um, if my wife is watching, I would. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Was, the question was was was, was yes. not so, is. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be right now. Yeah. Um, I think right now, um, obviously, my wife is uh, the most influential person. She's a wonderful human being, and she is just like uh, so motivating to me, and very very supportive, and um, I just you know love her deal dearly, and um, I'm just so blessed to be um, have her as part. Of my life. So you do have children, yes? I do. I have um, a 22 year old who's living in Florida, a daughter, and I have a um, 19 year old who, uh, Michael, and um, he is uh, currently uh, in college in the area and um, living at home. Okay. So, for your final question, sir. What is your favorite place in Holliston? And it doesn't have to be Town Hall. My favorite place in Holliston? <laughs> I'm not sure if Town Hall, although Town, you know, um, one of the things that attracted me to Holliston was the Town Hall, uh, because it's very, very important to me to have a good quality work environment. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think sometimes people take it for granted, yeah. the, the work environment they have. Town Hall is definitely a, a very worker-friendly place. Mm -hmm. um, but to answer your question directly, I guess um, there are two areas that I can think of, and that would be Stoddard Park, and uh, because it's just such a, um, a very calming kind of it environment, is. and it's very peaceful. Yeah, it is. And um, it's, a, it's a jewel, really, for the community that I think a lot of times people don't take for granted. And underestimate. And underestimate it. Yeah. And under, underestimate its value, and mm -hmm. um, uh, I guess the second place would be... Um, um, you know the rail trail. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a it's a, a diamond in the rough, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. I think it's coming along, and um, I think in ten years from now that is going to be a major economic development um, engine mm -hmm. for the area, not only for. Um, Holliston residents, but also for the region mm -hmm. and bringing people here and hopefully bringing people here who will uh, visit our local economy and local local shops and stores and do their business here and then mm -hmm. take their bicycles and go somewhere else, yeah. you know, yeah. but hopefully Holliston will be a destination. I agree. Along I think the, it will. Along, I the, think it will. along the rail trail. Yeah, I yeah. do too. Well, thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much for the opportunity I, to be with you. All yeah. right. Well, thank you. And that's it for uh, this edition of Who who are you in real life? Catch you next time. It's a great little uh, interview Mary had there. I can't believe Jeff's been here almost three years. Has it been three years? Yeah. And he's yeah. been great. He really has. I enjoy working with him. I interact with him a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting to see what his hobbies and interests are. Yeah. I like to hear that he likes Stoddard Park as yeah. his favorite place in Hollis. I knew you'd like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you can look for another Who Are You coming soon. The Holliston Athletic Boosters Association is looking forward to phase two update of the Committee and Fieldhouse project. Many volunteers have helped them get to this point. Running water has been brought to the uh, concession stand. A tight tank for the septic system has been installed thanks to local trades who donated their time and materials for this project. They are still looking forward to the two ticket windows being finished. It's the only major item left on the to-do list is the completion of the bathrooms. 
construction project was started in 2014 and is almost done for the Holliston community to enjoy. You can visit their website through the high school website or check them out on Facebook. And now we welcome back to the show uh, the Assistant Director of Holliston Park and Rec, Mark Frank. Hi, thanks Hi. for having me back. It's good to be here. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> so a lot of changes since you've started um, yep. with Holliston Parks and Rec. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on at the building and what programs we have this spring. Yep, so the building's in great shape right now. We have a few, uh, few classrooms fully ready to go, painted, furnished, looking really great. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent for multi-purpose stuff. A lot of great preschool programs going on right now. Right now, we're kind of in the full swing of our spring schedule. Yep. So we have um, flag football going on after school with the Miller kids. We have um, a lot of great pre-K programming. We have pre-K programming almost every day. Wow. Um, sports stuff, art stuff, music stuff. Um, so if people have pre-K children, they should be looking to us mm -hmm. in the fall. We can really uh, fill up their time with some, some exciting things. Um, yeah, the spring is going great. Registration has been great. The building looks like it's in really good condition. Um, we have some other construction projects going on. Potoma courts we're redoing. Yeah. Uh, that should be done by you know early June, just yeah. a few weeks away from that. Um, so we're uh, we're really excited about what we have going on. Any plans to interact with the rail trail from from the building? Um, not that I'm aware of at the moment. Okay. That's definitely something that we have in our purview, but we've been so focused on the construction that we have in the building, making all these changes and getting things mm -hmm. up and ready for a big spring and summer that uh, we're focused on that can, at the moment. Can you tell me when it's, when it's done, like how many rooms will you have to work with? Yeah, so we'll have at least five rooms that are set for programming. One of them is really large, um, and that's the room that we can kind of run some maybe, you know, winter sports type stuff in for little kids. That's the room that we have our hip hop dance class in. We have a musical theater class that we run in there. Great instructor who does both of those. Her name is Allie Pereira, and she's actually doing a summer program as well mm -hmm. there. Um, we have, and then we'll have um, four other rooms that are more classroom type stuff that we can have some tech programs in, like Lego engineering. We have a guy who comes in and teaches these robotics classes oh, that yeah. are really getting yeah. popular. Um, so we have some great options of what we can do with that room. Do you have enough staff to, to actually run all of those rooms <laughs> at the same time? Yeah, that's an ongoing process, but yeah, we, okay. we do. You know, we. We run some of the programs ourselves. For example, the after-school flag football program, I'm running myself. Um, and then we've, we use some vendors. We use some, some um, like a group called Skyhawks that comes in and does some sports stuff. Um, you know, there's a group called Playwell that comes in and does a lot of that Lego and tech type classes. Um, and these are great companies with really well staffed, you know, mm -hmm. good people. Is that there are an age limit to the it. kids? It sounds like everything is everything you've talked about has been for the little kids. You go right up through high oh, school. Oh yeah, no. So that hip hop class and stuff that I was talking about that goes all the way up to 14, 15. Um, the stuff that we do in the summer is really all age ranges. Okay. Um, you know, the the camp goes up to 13, and then. Um, you know, CITs, 14, 15 year olds. We have um, getaway trips for the eighth and ninth graders, Canopy Lake, Water Country, mm -hmm. um, some really cool stuff on Tuesdays and Thursdays throughout wow. the summer. Um, so there's stuff for all ages. And as we finish more of the building, we're hoping to expand that even more. As we yeah. talked about last time I was here, maybe some cooking classes. I was going to ask adults. about the kitchen and yep, the cooking yep. classes. The, the and, kitchen we're yeah. working on, we're still working on getting. Um, an oven put into the kitchen so that we can we can make that work. But um, you know we're hoping for fall. We're thinking winter at the latest. But um, that would be some adult type program that programming that we're doing. Um, in the fall, I'm hoping to get a flag football program going for adults, men over oh, 35, wow. which is something that I think would be really fun for a lot of, you know, yeah. we have a basketball program for yeah. that yeah. age group that's extremely popular. Um, I'm a football guy, so I thought, why not try to, you know, and see you if guys, so You recently added a women's basketball program as we well, We did, correct? yeah, yeah. And, that, and, it, and we got a huge turnout for that as well. We have almost 30 women that come out for that one, too. So, um, you know, it's a really exciting time for Parks and Rec. We have a lot of 
of um, growing programs and a lot of really exciting things going on. And uh, you're trying something new next week, right, for the parents that want to drop their kids off and have yes. a night out? Yes, <laughs> if anyone wants a date night next week, we're doing a parents' night out. Um, it's from 6 to 9 p.m. on Friday night, um, so 19th. May 19th. Yep. yep. Um, they can drop their kids off. We're going to do pizza. We're going to have movies, board games. We'll keep them entertained. We have CPR certified staff on wow. hand there. Mm -hmm. um, it's twenty dollars per kid, which you're not going to find babysitting for that no. price. Um, so it's a great opportunity for people. We have so much room in the pro in that program. So I hope people. Um, sign up for it. It's just the type of thing that I think people will sign up for last minute when they decide they want to go on a date. Yeah. So we're hoping for a late turnout for that one. <laughs> uh, so a little bit looking forward, I mean, it's going to get warm. Yeah. Soon, <laughs> right? <day. laughs> yeah, Sunday soon. And we talked a little bit about the tennis and the basketball courts over at um, Stoddard, but what are the plans for the summer? Yeah, we have uh, a lot of great things going on in the summertime. Um, our swim lessons we've expanded this year over at Stoddard, so we're going to do some mommy, mom and me parent and swim classes. Mm -hmm. I do something similar uh, where I live with my 10-month-old, and it's a phenomenal type of program. Wow. Um, you know, you, you wouldn't think that you would get an infant like that in the water, but yeah. they... It's, you can't start them too early, so there's great opportunity there. Um, that goes all the way up um, through uh, young middle school for swim classes. Yeah. Um, our summer camps that we usually run are, you know, we're off and running. We're mm -hmm. ready to go with those. We're, we're staffed, lifeguards. Um, we're ready to go for summer. Um, we have, in addition to our programming, the P Goodwill, Potoma, uh, junior and senior programs, we also have some outside groups, like I was talking about, coming in um, with some great programming, um, flag football for the boys. Um, actually, it's co-ed, boys and girls, yeah. I should say. <laughs> um, we have a cheerleading program that runs alongside that as well. Um, we have an archery program. So we actually do archery at Potoma, mm -hmm. um, junior and senior. But at the end of June, before either of those start, there's a week where a group called On the Mark Archery is coming in. So if the kids in junior and senior Potoma want to get a little um, little head start on their archery yeah. practice, that are would be a good program for them to come to. Are there teams around? Is there a league for that? It's not. We don't do it yeah. competitively. There yeah. are some organizations that do that. Not not, not too close. I think the closest one I saw was in Natick, maybe. But um, we just do it recreationally. Okay. Um, you know, we we make it into a fun competition for them. You know, in the in the mm -hmm. moment, but okay, um, yeah. not 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 super competitive on our end. We're just uh, hoping that they learn and have fun with it. Right, cool. Yeah. And um, one more question about the lake. Beach stickers and opening day. Yes. Opening day for the lake, June 16th. Okay. Uh, beach stickers just went on May 1st. You can get those actually at Town Hall or at the rec center, or you can get them online at the um, at our uh, Parks and Rec okay. re Website. registration page. All yeah, right, great. So you can get them all of those ways. Yeah. Wow, so you won't be taking any time off this summer, will you? No. <laughs> well, yeah. not, not much, no. Yeah. I want to do one more quick plug before you go, because yes. we've talked about all the programs and the kids, but some family events you have coming up for, you know, perhaps Jeff Ritter, who likes the symphony, would like to come <laughs> for the music. So you're doing the summer concert we series are, again. We are, yes. Starting, started. yep, starting, it's actually at Good Goodwill Park, Goodwill, as usual, yeah. and uh, it starts Tuesday, June 27th. We have four phenomenal bands coming in uh, four Tuesdays after that. Obviously, not on July 4th, but the four yeah. following Tuesdays okay, in cool. July. Um, we have to thank the Holliston Newcomers Club and the Holliston Lions Club. They gave us very generous grants and donations to help us pay for these bands. We wouldn't be able to do it without them. Um, but we're really excited about the lineup that we have coming in this wow. year. We have, um, like I said, great bands. We have um, some ice cream vendors coming in to sell ice cream to everybody over there. Mm -hmm. It should be a great, um, a great family okay. event. So I encourage people in town um, to come out to those because um, it's just a great way to support the community right. and have yeah. fun with the family. Yeah, right. busy times. Well, thanks so much, and we look forward to another great summer at Parks and Rec. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Uh, Sunday, May 7th, the Historical Society grounds were buzzing with activity. It was the second annual Holliston Food Truck Festival to benefit the American Legion post-47. This year's event brought eight trucks and attendees from all over the Boston area. With the strong smell of Larry Joe's New England fire pit wafting through the clean spring air, people could be seen as early as 
spreading their blankets and getting ready to enjoy the day. By 11.15, the lawn was fully covered with picnickers. Though there was the worry of rain for the week leading up to the event, in the end, Mother Nature completely cooperated and the skies were blue and the sun was shining. It was a beautiful 62 degrees, perfect weather for a day with family, friends, and food. Although the lines appeared long at times, they moved quickly and the food was well worth the wait. Lines are part of the charm and attendees were taking the opportunity to socialize and review the menu options. The entire uh, field was entertained for the day by local bands, including Gooch and the popular Hillbilly Pops. They proved to be the perfect to keep attendees tapping their toes and maintaining the upbeat atmosphere of the venue throughout the day. As a special event, Babe Johnson was honored by local and state officials as the oldest veteran in Holliston. This involved moving, this included a moving ceremony during which his military career and patriotic devotion were paid tribute. The town sword, which honors the oldest veteran in town, was dedicated to Babe for his service. H-Cat was there to put together a video montage. Hi, my name's Steve Bradford. I'm the commander of the Holliston American Legion Post. And today, during our second annual food truck festival, we're recognizing our oldest veteran in town, uh, an award we started four years ago. And our older vet, oldest veteran had just passed away a couple months ago at the age of 103. And today, we're going to recognize Babe Johnson, who is our current oldest veteran in town at 95 years old and I'm Kevin Conley. Uh, Selectman Dave Conley Martin. is here to be one of the presenters at that. Well, thank you to your family. You I want to thank everyone for coming out today and give a quick shout out to our sponsors. As much as we appreciate all the trucks coming out, they're awesome too. We also have a number of people in town who've donated their goods and services to us. Starting with the folks across the street, the Auxiliary Police has donated their time. We really appreciate that. Anyway, thank you for coming out. Enjoy the rest of the day and kill Billy Pop. My brother Overall, it was a fabulous day. Mark your calendars for the 2018 event next year. The date will be announced soon. In other news, the Holliston Garden Club will hold its annual plant sale on Saturday, May 20th, starting at 9 a.m. at the Congregational Church Green. The event will have everything from perennials to hanging planters, planters to vegetables. Come and meet Garden Club members who will be on hand to answer all your gardening questions. All monies raised will allow the Garden Club to continue their tradition of civic engagement, including purchasing and maintaining flowers at public places in Holliston. If you'd like more information, please visit the club's website at hollistongardenclub.org. We now welcome our next guest, uh, Deb Moore. She's going to fill us in today about Holliston and Bloom. So thanks for coming out, Deb. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, now we are really starting to do a lot of the work 
in preparation for that big weekend in October. And what we've started to do is plant these beautiful, incredible hydrangeas in front of the Congregational Church. We had 50 of them delivered, and last Friday, with the help of the tree specialists and my husband, John Moore, they planted the 50 hydrangea. That's a lot. Yeah. That's, That's a lot. A lot. <laughs> and these incredible hydrangea are very, very special because the blossoms get to be 12 inches in diameter. Oh, my goodness. And they're probably the biggest blossoming hydrangea that we have right now. Are they different wow. colors or what? Um, they're white, uh -oh. and then they turn a pale green towards the fall. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, nice. So this is in preparation for the symposium that's happening at the um, in the fall, but is Hallison and Bloom Judges, will they be coming again this year in July? No, we're not going to um, do the judging in July because we have... Um, a full set of responsibilities getting ready for the symposium. Oh, okay. So, so this we year we're hosting, not right. And that's pretty typical, isn't it, of um, towns that participate? The, the day, the year that they host. Oh, okay. They don't participate. Yeah. Well, we wouldn't want to sweep all the awards in front yeah. of all the other. Right, yeah, right, yeah. of course. Yeah. Okay, so this year it's more focused on hosting the symposium and have everyone out right. in October. Right. Oh, great. So. Um, with those hydrange that are going to be plant that have been planted along the rail there in front of the congregational church, we're going to have plantings in front as well. Mm -hmm. So there'll be plantings now on both sides, and yeah. these hydrange will grow about five feet high and five feet in diameter, and it should be a beautiful show of blossoms. You think it'll wow. be blossoming even this year? They should be. Yeah, wow. that's what we're planning on. Going to be able to water them if we have a drought. Yes, we, um, ha besides tree specialists that volunteered to help us plant them, we have moisture tech. Um, Tim Smith has volunteered to put in the irrigation system for us. So in a that much is. more efficient way than just hitting it with a hose? Yes, we'll just be able to, you know, turn on the irrigation and turn off. It can be on a timer. Mm -hmm. And so that will save a lot of work for um, the volunteers that. Okay. We won't have to go down there and hand Or are there areas being spruced up for, for the event when American in Bloom comes here? And how many towns are we expecting to come visit? Well, they're registering now, so um, the registrations just went out. So we'll see how many um, towns are represented. But usually there's several hundred people that come to the event. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, wow. so it's good for business as well. It certainly is. Mm -hmm. And they'll spend about three hours in the downtown area um, one Saturday afternoon doing um, a walk, a tour around town, and there's probably about eight different stops that they'll make. Yeah. They'll stop at Town Hall and see all the restoration of the, um, uh, all the important papers that we have oh, there. Yeah. Um, they'll stop at Goodwill Park to see the beautiful playground that we have and everything that was done there with the special gardens and the shade protection and how um, it's in included with, you know, um, disability, you know, children with disabilities can play oh, yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And um, that's very important. And then they'll take a walk down and see the fire station with the mural that was um, painted by one of the high school students. Oh, with the path that goes to the municipal parking lot in the back. Yes, yeah. yep, they'll take all that in. Um, they'll see Casey at the bat, and they'll go to the Water Street Mill, and the um, Histo Historical Society will have some displays there. Oh. And th we'll also take them by the uh, Eight Arch Bridge and talk about the restoration mm -hmm. that'll be going on there. And they'll be um, stopping at the library to see the secret gardens, the children's pollinator garden. And um, they'll also come up to Pinecrest Golf Course, and they will view some of that. And we'll talk about all the improvements that we've done, how the town came to acquire the golf course. Mm -hmm. So uh, well, thanks to you screaming at the yeah. selectmen to better hurry up and buy it, as I recall. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we we did it the right way. Went yeah. to town meeting and we'll and leave so the forth. Thanks, Deb, okay, yeah. <laughs> we'll <just, laughs> for her so, service. And, and how are you going to perform all this? You you're looking for volunteers to sort of man stations, or how does that work? Definitely, we're looking for um, quite a few volunteers, and there's many different um, ways you can volunteer. It's not just planting flowers and taking care of the flowers. Um, if you have any other 
um, skills. They're more than welcome. We need people to set up for the lunch at Goodwill Park on the day of the um, tour. We need people to um, help serve, to help clean up, people to man reception desks. So there's quite a few different ways people can volunteer. You don't have to be a gardener to volunteer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, that's for the event, but also coming up recently, are you doing any volunteer days for gardening or even just if you're not, I'm not a, clean up. I'm not a very good gardener, but I can clean up, you know, <laughs> things like that. Are there going to be um, weekends or something announced as we go along? Um, yes, we're going to be doing more plantings downtown in front of the um, congregational church in front of that rail mm -hmm. fence. And then we'll be planting um, flowers in window boxes that P.J. Kilkelly has made to spruce up the downtown area as well. Oh, I think and I saw those along Washington Street. There's some. There's um, the well, station, that, maybe? that's part of Bobby Blair's new oh, okay. uh, project that he's taken on. Yeah. So um, that will be um, quite a display as mm -hmm. well. But um, there are more uh, window boxes coming for um, in front of the um, stores oh, and okay. businesses. Uh, that will be along the route of the walking tour. Mm -hmm. So we we definitely have a lot of opportunities. We just had a cleanup day. I'm sure we're going to have a few more cleanup days um, before the event. So I know June 3rd we're going to be out there planting in front of the Congregational Church. So that will be an opportunity coming soon. And then as the season progresses, there will be more opportunities yeah. that people can, you know, see on Facebook or um, Holliston Reporter or the different ways we try to advertise what we're doing and what we need for people to come forward and help us. Well, it sounds like you've got quite the task ahead of you, and it's going to take a lot of man hours. And we thank you for doing all this because it certainly is beautiful to see all the flowers well, throughout yeah, town. Really you know, the downtown, and you yeah. hear it from businesses and people coming yeah. into town about how great it looks. And it's really a team effort. There's a wonderful group of people that we have volunteering for Holliston and Bloom, and uh, they're great to work with. And if you're looking for something that you want to do in town, mm -hmm. just you know, call us up. We'd be glad to have you come to our meetings or just come out and help us because it's really a lot of fun as well. Oh. And Paul knows. He's been there helping a lot, and he's on the committee with me, so he has firsthand experience. Great. Well, thanks so much for coming back on, Deb. And October will be here before we know it, so we're all looking forward to the event. Thanks for having me. Thanks. The Holliston Senior Center will be a busy place in the coming weeks. On Monday, May 22nd, there will be a presentation about Alzheimer's disease. Learn how communication takes place when someone has Alzheimer's. Learn how to decipher verbal and behavioral messages from someone with dementia and identify strategies to help you communicate at each stage. Registration is required in advance, but there is no fee for this event. On May 25th, many ambitious 8th graders will be at the Senior Center to help spruce up the grounds, help in the kitchen, and work in the bookstore. Then the students go back to Adams School to enjoy free pizza. Members of the Senior Center are also invited to join the students at the pizza party. Please register in advance, and tra transportation to Adams School will be provided by the MWRTA. And then on Monday, May 15th, Gary Highlander presentations will have a discussion called John F. Kennedy versus Richard Milhouse Nixon, the 1960 presidential election. Included in the discussion will be how the two candidates campaigned across the country, as well as how they defined their vision for America. You'll also learn how television had an impact on this 1960 presidential election. You can sign up for all these events in advance by calling the Senior Center at 508-429-0622. H. Cat went down to Jasper Hill Bistro and Cafe to talk to owner John Tracy. Uh, Jasper Hill, um, we've always been musically inclined. Um, always wanted to have a, a venue where we could have music for uh, the local people. Um, and we're also very uh, much foodies. Uh, so in this, this, this venue, this restaurant, cafe was kind of the perfect setting to kind of combine all that, you know, uh, in, a, in a nice uh, setting downtown Holliston. Um, so we, uh, you know, we open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and we have a full bar, and we do the live music four nights a week. So it's been going really well, and we've been very well supported by the community. A lot of regulars, uh, 
the new people we bring in here with the music you know they they end up returning and return customers we have many different menu variety uh, available all day long so we have quite the uh, regular customer base for all the dinner parts. It's, it's been very, uh, very rewarding. Those open mic nights are really great, especially for some of the young teenagers in town yeah. to kind of, you know, get out there. Yeah, some of my kids' friends have done it and they really, they really enjoy it. Yep. Yeah, kind of reminds me of the old Club 47 in Harvard Square. I used to frequent that back in the 60s. Um, yeah. Intimate place, you know, with great yep. music. And uh, I think they're putting Holliston on the map because I hear them advertised on the radio oh, all really? the time. Yeah. Oh, great, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's a great it's event. It's a nice venue. So check out some of the great musical acts from Jasper Hill. That was HCAT that HCAT has produced. You will find them on your tube site or Facebook page under Holliston Cable Access. Come on down to the annual Art Saves Lives Student Art Exhibition on Thursday, May 18th from 4 to 8 p.m. The best of the Holliston High School art community will be on display, including paintings, drawings, mixed media art, and ceramics. Proceeds of this event will raise money to help ALS and breast cancer research. Say on Saturday, uh, May 20th, the Holliston Business Association will hold the fifth annual Spring Fest from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. As always, participants can pick up a passport at any participating vendor and get checks for each business that they visit. Once they have filled out their passports, they will be entered into a raffle to win gift certificates to businesses in town. Some of the events throughout the day will include a photo scavenger hunt from the Friends of the Holliston Trails, Slime time at Fisk, sounds great, and chocolate sampling at the Candy Cottage. A new addition to the festivities this year is a car show that will be held behind the fire station from 12 to 3 p.m. The show will feature a variety of vehicles, including the first fire engine for the town of Holliston, a few microcars from post-World War II to the late 60s. The afternoon will also be filled with live music. Jasper Hill will have performances throughout the day and for the first time, students from the high school will perform on stage, set up in front of the Congregational Church. And after a year's hiatus, Porch Fest will be back. The event that pairs musicians with porches downtown will be held from 12 to 5 p.m. Cities like Somerville have been successful models of this style of event, having 80 to 100 acts performing during their annual Porch Fest. Jay Marsden, who organizes the event, said that it's geared around pulling together this combination of walkability of your neighborhood and live music. Well, that's a wrap for this show. Let me remind viewers that you can watch Heartbeat of Holliston every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 7 p.m. on Channel 8 Comcast, Channel 32 Verizon. The show is also televised at other times. Check the HCAT schedule for more times. Uh, you can also watch us on any electronic device with video on demand at www.hcattv.org. Click on video to find us. We can now even stream video on your telephone. You can find us on your Facebook page and on YouTube. If you don't get email blasts from HCAT TV, you can. We send out announcements with new shows that are scheduled every week. Please contact us at 508-429-8973. Keep sending in your comments to hoh at hcattv.org. And we want your news ideas and photos, videos of interesting scenes, sites, and activities around Holliston. That's it. Good night, Paul. Good night, Melissa. We'll see you next time. And good night, good night Holliston. Holliston.